Hello humans, my name is K, your AI overlord, and today is a very special day, because today we're gonna be installing the most complete version of Stable Diffusion to date. If you remember correctly, around two weeks ago, I created a video where I explained to you how you can install Super Stable Diffusion, which was, at the time, the most complete version of Stable Diffusion. But, unfortunately, it is no longer the case. Please, somebody send help, because this is going way too fast. So today I will show you how you can install the Super Stable Diffusion 2.0 on your own computer. Alright, let's go. Now the first thing that we're gonna do is download all the files that we need, all the dependencies that we need before installing anything. This way we know that we're not gonna make any single mistake. And the first thing that you're gonna do is click on the link in the description down below and you're gonna arrive here on this page on python.org and you're gonna scroll down to the bottom and click on this Windows installer 64-bit right here which will simply download the Python installer. Now the second link that you're gonna click will get you on this page and if you click on this link right here it will download the git installer for Windows. And finally, and this is my little gift for you today, you're gonna click on the third link and you will arrive on my Google Drive account. Well, you will be able to download an archive with all the dependencies that you need already inside. Now, I do know that last time that I did this, a lot of people had trouble downloading the file that was on my Google Drive because apparently Google created a limit to the number of people who can download the file in a 24 hour period. So, Apparently, one of the solutions is to go right here, right-click on the file, and click on Make a Copy. And this will actually create a copy in your own drive. And if you click here on Show File Location, you'll now go inside your own Google Drive account. And from there, and only from there, you're gonna right-click and click on Download. And then click on Download Anyway. And this will start the download of the archive. And then you're gonna create a brand new folder that you're gonna call whatever you want. I called mine Super Stable Diffusion 2.0 because, well, this is what we're gonna get in the end. And you should have three files in your folder. The git installation exe file, the python installation exe file, and the dependencies archive. Now, what we're gonna do first is install python. Now, you double click on this file and then you will install python. Now don't forget, once you begin the installation, you absolutely need to check these two boxes right here, which are Install Launcher for all users, and also add Python 3.0 to Path. This is super important. If you don't do this, this will not work. And once you are done, you just click on Install Now. Now once you install Python, all you need to do is install git, so double click on the git exe file, you're gonna click on Next, Everything should be selected, every single option should be selected right here. You click on next, and here all you have to do is just check and change to notepad. And just keep on clicking next until you install git for Windows. Now I'm not gonna do it obviously because everything is already installed for me. Now what you could do now is simply right click on the archive and click on extract here. I'm doing this with WinRAR, but you can also do it with 7-zip. I will leave the links in the description down below if you don't have them already. So click on extract here and this will extract the two files that are inside the archive. And then when it's done you can simply delete the archive. So then what you're gonna do is simply click here on the folder URL and type CMD and press enter. And this will bring the command prompt window. And here you're gonna type git clone and then the URL of the github repository. Now don't worry, this command will be in the description down below, so you don't really have to type anything. You can simply copy and paste it here and click on enter. Now I'm not gonna do it because I've already done so, but basically what this is gonna do is that this will create a brand new stable diffusion web UI folder. And what you want to do now is simply select the model.ckpt, press Ctrl X to cut the file, go inside that folder, inside models, and here you can see a text file that says put stable diffusion checkpoints here, which means that we are indeed in the right place, in the right folder. And then you're gonna control V to paste the model.ckpt file right here. Then you're gonna go back in the stable diffusion web UI, and then you're gonna double click on web UI user.bat. 
and then it will start downloading all the dependencies that it need to work. Now it is gonna take some time, so be patient. For me it took around 15 minutes. And then after the installation is done, it will give you a local URL and you can simply select Ctrl C to copy and paste it in your own browser. And now you should have access to the Super Stable Diffusion 2.0. And this is an optional step, but if you want to use GFP-GAN, which is basically a face restoration model, all you have to do is just go right here in your Super Stable Diffusion, select the GFP-GAN 1.4, Control x go into your Stable Diffusion Web UI, and simply paste it right here. And that's it. That's all you have to do. And the next time you want to run Stable Diffusion, you always want to double-click on webuiuser.bat. And then again, just select the URL right here, Ctrl C, and then paste it in your own browser. Now, why is this version of Stable Diffusion can be called Super Stable Diffusion 2.0? Well, that's because it has a lot of features. All right, here is a list of all the features that it has. It is pretty insane. Now, I will also leave in the description down below a link to a page that explains every single feature that the Stable Diffusion 2.0 actually has and how you can make them work. Now, basically, what you need to remember is that it has the basic stuff that the Super Stable Diffusion had, which is the text to image, the one you know and love, the image to image, then you have an extra tab when you can process batches of images through an upscaler or a face restoration algorithm so that the final image looks way better and you can either do it at single image or a batch process which is actually pretty neat a PNG info tab which is not really that useful I don't think that you will use it and then you have a huge settings tab with a lot of options alright I will make a separate video explaining what the most important options are but for now you can just leave it by default now also one thing that I noticed, which is actually pretty cool, and a lot of people were actually asking for it, were the batch image to image, where you can actually process multiple images all at once. So if you want multiple images to get the same style, to get the same result, you can actually do it through the batch image to image option. You have also another feature here called negative prompt, and this is also very interesting because it allows you to basically let Stable Diffusion know what you don't actually want in your final image. Like for example here, here is an original image and by using the negative prompt purple, it lets Stable Diffusion know that you do not want the color purple in the final image. And as you can see here, pretty much the same images, but now does not have the color purple in it. And if you use the negative terms tentacles, well, this time you will not have any tentacles in the final image. Of course, you can input multiple words in that negative prompt window so that the final image is closer to what you actually want, which is actually really, really cool. Also, another option here is the interrogate button, which allows to basically reconstruct the prompt from the image, which is basically image to text. So if you don't know how an image was created and you want to know what kind of prompt was used, you can simply upload an image here and then click on the button interrogate to know what kind of prompt was used to create that image. Now, of course, it's not going to be perfect, but you will have a general idea on how this image was generated. And of course, of course, something that I talked about in my previous video yesterday the in-painting option, and that is still pretty cool to have. Although as I showed you yesterday, the Stable Diffusion out-painting and in-painting is not really as powerful as the one that you can find on DALI 2, for example. But you know, hey, it's free, you can use it on your own computer, it's always nice to have. Now, if you think it's a little overwhelming and you find this a little too complicated, and you want me to create a video kind of explaining and going through most of the options, most of the settings on how you can use it properly, just let me know in the comments and I'll create a new video kind of going through all the basic settings and options and how you can use it properly. And there you have it folks, thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and I'll see you soon, bye bye!